Data Bank commence recording. Dateline July 10th, 2020. This is General Ed Straker of the World Security Service. The following series of video briefings contains highly classified material and access is restricted to authorized personnel. Today, I will be discussing the alien space vehicles encountered by Shadow, the craft commonly known as UFOs. This briefing is based on contemporary eyewitness accounts and classified mission reports prepared by members of Shadow. UFOs were spacecraft of non-terrestrial design and used by an alien race that repeatedly attacked the Earth several decades ago. Although there was evidence to suggest these attacks started years earlier, they became increasingly frequent and aggressive in the early 1980s. Shadow, the Supreme Headquarters Alien Defense Organization, was formed as a covert measure to combat these intrusions from space, protect humanity, and prevent mass panic. On these fronts, Shadow was ultimately successful. However, comparatively little was learned about the technology used by the aliens, despite frequent engagements. A typical UFO measured 50 feet in diameter and comprised several key sections. The dorsal portion of the hull was encased in a transparent dome of unknown composition. It was resistant to cutting tools and was almost impervious to direct assault with missiles and other weapons. Inside the dome and attached to its underside was a cylindrical component. It was approximately 10 feet in diameter and tapered slightly towards the top. The purpose of this device was uncertain. However, eyewitness accounts often describe the component as being seen to pulsate with a green glow. Shadow encountered several instances of people who had been subjected to deep hypnosis or mind control. It was therefore hypothesized that the cylindrical device inside the UFO was linked to such incidents. Directly below the aforementioned device was a conical structure with 16 thin struts attached. Each of the struts was connected to a single teardrop-shaped paddle. The entire assembly rotated at high speed while a UFO was in flight. And therefore, it seemed logical to assume that the assembly was a vital component of the craft's propulsion system. While traveling in space, UFOs could reach velocities far in excess of the speed of light. The craft were obviously adapted to traverse the infinite void of space in this manner. Earth has not yet developed faster than light travel, and we theorize that it could be decades before this technology exists. However, we know that such an undertaking poses a number of dangers to the human body and our examinations of alien subjects yielded a few potential countermeasures to these problems. The alien spacesuits were filled with a green-tinted, oxygen-rich liquid. Our working hypothesis at the time was that the liquid filled their lungs and aided their survival during extended periods of super-light travel. The ventral section of a UFO was encased in a transparent saucer, similar to the dome on the dorsal side. The saucer enclosed a platform at the base of the rotating paddle assembly. This platform housed the ramp that provided access to a UFO's interior via a concealed hatch in the side of the craft. During a post-rescue debriefing, Shadow Operative James Regan recalled seeing this ramp as he was dragged aboard the alien vessel. Although UFOs had no visible weapons array, each craft was capable of firing devastatingly powerful energy blasts. These energy blasts were far beyond our level of technology at the time and carried a greater destructive power than any experimental laser system then in development. The energy required for such fantastic attacks was most likely generated as a byproduct of the propulsion system, siphoning off excess energy to the craft's weapon projector. 
even with our vehicle's reinforced ablative armor, there was little chance that any of our craft could withstand a direct hit from a UFO's fully charged energy weapon. As previously stated, the transparent material covering the majority of the UFO's surface provided an effective screen against missile attack. However, the section of the hull around the rotating paddles was unshielded and afforded the vehicle's only true weak spot. It had been noted that a direct projectile strike in this region could be enough to cripple or even destroy a UFO. The UFO had one other distinct vulnerability. Its velocity was severely limited in Earth's atmosphere, making it a viable target for the skydiver fleet and shadow ground forces. Furthermore, prolonged exposure to the Earth's atmosphere had a critical destabilizing effect on a UFO, causing the craft to disintegrate or explode violently. This side effect of contact with our atmosphere made it virtually impossible to capture a UFO intact for a closer examination. There were at least two further variants of enemy craft encountered by Shadow. The first was a small single-person escape capsule, similar in design to the main craft, but apparently less advanced. The second was an underwater variant, shaped more like a torpedo, and armed with an equally deadly energy weapon. All Shadow personnel had standing orders to learn as much as possible about UFOs and their variants, as any information, however slight, may have held the key to ending the conflict with the alien race. This concludes the briefing on the alien UFO craft. You may wonder why this mysterious vessel is included in this series of briefings. Well, as it turned out, Shadow were finally able to capture a fully working example in the closing months of the war, thanks to a particularly well-executed plan that involved luring a UFO to the lunar surface. Reverse engineering the equipment on board gave us some of the answers we were searching for and proved to be invaluable. It also revealed a great deal of information about faster-than-light travel, something our research team is currently working on for Project Altares. In summary, the domed shape of a UFO was not a sight any shadow operative ever wanted to see. And in some cases, it was indeed the last thing some of them ever saw. But thanks to the information we've gathered, in the intervening years, I can confidently say their sacrifice was not in vain. Databank, cease recording.